I have to offer sincerest apologies to for Eva, um, Eva Mitchell, the CEO of the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange. Um, unfortunately, had an emergency which just came up. So instead, we would have um, the stock exchanges of Jamaica and Barbados represented here today. Um, and we are very ably assisted by a very experienced moderator. Just before we go into to introducing the moderator though, I have to say a very, very sincere appreciation to our two presenters for this morning, Brenda Kolkani and Ajay Kopal. Uh, what they have shown, for, shown us at Sustainex in terms of how organizations and large organizations, including corporations can collect data systematically, which we have all identified maybe one of those key challenges facing us. How do we collect that data? And then how do we plot those data so we can see in one dashboard? So many uh, bits of information which can be compared across your sectors, uh, look at one specific organization. And what I really like about the information, and, and this was something that drew me when I first got a look at the demo, is the fact that it is tied very directly to uh, international reporting standards. So um, you see the GRI and you see all of the frameworks, which has been the ones that's pushing how we report on our sustainability and ESG metrics. So if it is that Ajay and Brenda would be able to stay on with us and as we go along, if there are questions and so that they may be able to take and be a part of the conversation, we'd be very, very happy to have you. Uh, but at this time we go straight into panel one and uh, I would want to introduce our moderator who will then introduce our two panelists, Marlene Street Forest from Jamaica and uh, Marlon Yad from the Barbados Stock Exchange. Our moderator for panel one is Gabriel Faria and Gabriel is the chairman of Caribbean Advocacy. His passion, is building cohesive teams with a single-minded focus to take companies to higher levels of performance through superior brand equity management, improving business process, uh, driving operational excellence, understanding the future of industry and creating new trails rather than following old ones. So I know that uh, Gabriel is, is more than able to, to help flesh out a lot of the, the nuances and concerns that people may have because they would want to hear from the stock exchanges. You know, what are some of the things that they need to be able to develop um, in order to meet this challenge of ESG and sustainability for organizations? So Gabriel, I hand over the virtual floor to you to introduce your panelists and bring them into the discussion. Thank you very much, Kamla, and welcome to the to the 50 plus people that are in, in this um, session right now. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I read the when I read the profiles of the of the panelists, I, I told myself, I said, I think I was very lucky. I had I had I had amazing, an amazing panel. And I looked at all three panelists, unfortunately, Eva could make it. And I've always been a, a huge fan of Marlene Street Forest. And I decided I would not read everything on her, on her profile, but I actually, Marlene, um, had a look at the book you wrote in 2016. And I actually read, I actually read a column on the Jamaica Observer um, where it said on the rise and rise of Marlene Street Forest. So, you know, um, Marlene, of course, is a manager director of the Jamaica Stock Exchange, and, and she has done an amazing job. I, I, always, I've always engaged with her, and every time I call her, I say, so how many new companies are on the exchange? And I told her she's slowing down a little bit because she's at 45 at the junior, right? But Marlene has, has built a, a reputation, and it's interesting because when Marlene launched a book, both Marlon and Eva spoke at it. At, at the lodge. And so Marlene, of course, has a finance background. And it's interesting because Marlon, who has been at the exchange for 
And I hope you all don't mind us calling each other by first names. Um, no. Too late now. <laughs> right? um, when I read Marlon and I looked at Marlon's uh, history and I said, you know, when you think that he's been at the exchange um, and it's 20 years now, but again, when you look at the training, of course, finance sits on finance sits on both on both panelists back back uh, background, but then Marlon also brings in law, specializing in securities law, right? So it's it's interesting, and I think Marlon, you did that in Canada, right? If I remember correctly, yeah. yes, yes, that's right. correct. Right. So we are really fortunate to have this panel. I'm sorry, Eva couldn't make it. You know, when I do these sessions, and Carla calls me, or someone calls me. Everyone says, well, how come you do these sessions? I learned so much this week. I sat into some of these sessions. I couldn't sit in on every single one. But the panelists across the week, um, I'm walking away a much more educated individual than, than a week ago. Um, and for those here, we are talking about ESG as it relates to the um, to, to governance in the stock exchanges. And, and I guess a lot of people are asking, when is this going to happen? <clears throat> and throughout this week, the one thing that resonated with me, and I'll be happy to get feedback from the audience and from, and from the panelists, is that there's no doubt that both stock exchanges and even the current methodologies and systems and governments and, and governance and disclosure really focuses strongly on fiscal governance, IFRS, and, and those other areas. And of course, environmental governance, which we're seeing more. And I know Marlene and Marlon, both of you all are part of the UN Compact, right? Uh, what is it? Um, UN Sustainable Stock Exchange Initiative. Um, right. And um, we are part of the UN Global Compact. As a matter of fact, right. I just came from a meeting, uh, a session this morning, where I had to sit on a panel. So this is my second panel for the day. Right. And, and, and a lot of this is, again, the, the, the fight, fiscal governments is a given in, 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 um, on the stock exchanges. The environmental oversight is becoming a lot more relevant. The one that I think is still, and this is my thought, and I'd like to hear from each of the, each of the panelists on this. The one that I still think is a little, has less rigor around it is the social, right? Um, in terms of in terms of in terms of reporting and a body that's reporting on it. And Molly, I see you're raising your eyebrows, so probably there's more on that. But this is my thought. Um, and the goal of this discussion is really to help listed companies in the region be aware of what stock exchanges be looking at. What what's the next steps? Um, there are many standards, as I said, um, and my, my tone on this is that all organizations, and especially in the Caribbean, and I, I say this, and you know, I've heard the uh, Barbadian Prime Minister speak on this um, when, when, she, when she was speaking at one, at one of those sessions, I think it was at COP, that we have an obligation to our citizens because we live on island states and small island states, right? And, and while, and that's environment, we have, a, we have a strong obligation in environment, but organizations also have a strong social obligation. Governance is a given. Governance is a given. Today, there's a, a portfolio of acronyms which are used, SDGs. I mean, you all remember the United Nations came out and rolled out the SDGs for us, right? Uh, when COP23 comes or COP24, or COP25 or COP26, we get very aware and, and the, whole, the whole ecosystem is talking about the environment. But then you have, if you do a Google search, you will see it peaks and then, and, then, and then dips. So as we talk about, about ESG now, independently, as I said, they have, all, they have all existed. They've all been reported on. Environment is becoming a lot more significant. Governance is a is a is a, a, a hygiene item as far as I'm concerned. It has to be there. Social is where I think there's a real opportunity for businesses to transform and to take a proactive approach to reporting on 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 their social um, initiatives. And I think it's a 
you know, the, the, the group that spoke over there earlier used a term called employee retention. Today, employees want to work in an environment which has um, strong social standards and investors are looking to invest in businesses that, that, are, that are following good ESG practices. But let's all recognize, and, and, and we had a, I had a discussion with Marlene and, and Marlon last week, it's not a one size fits all solution. So what's required for somebody larger, what's the obligation for somebody larger uh, businesses, what's required for businesses in, in manufacturing or in, um, in high risk environments are different. The whole circular economy aspect of businesses and services versus businesses in manufacturing that are depleting or, or, or impacting the environment is different. And while ESG is definitely dominating the boardroom agenda, we now need to make sure each acronym, each one, E, S, and G, get equal, equal attention. What I would like to do is I'd like to hand over, first of all, to Marlene for her to give us her um, thoughts and her input on this, and then ask, ask Marlon to, um, to comment. So each of you all will have you know, 10 minutes to speak, and then let's get into a discussion on some other topics. So Marlene, over to you. Thank you, Gabriel. First, let me just say, um, commend the Caribbean Corporate Governance Institute for Governance Week 2023, and Kamla for for having invited me to speak on this particular area in terms of our listed company and the compliance in terms of ESG. Um, Marlon is here, and so it is a pleasure to share stage with him as well. Um, we have done that on so many other occasions, so happy to be here with Marlon. I'm going to be speaking about, um, for the the, the next eight or so minutes on really the Jamaica Stock Exchange, looking at environment, social and governance from the lens of the Jamaica Stock Exchange and where we are. As Gabriella said, it is a journey. So obviously the one that has gotten the primary attention to date of our 100 companies that are listed on the market um, is that of governance. Mm -hmm. And it is important to just establish where we are with that. Um, the stock exchange has rules, and those are some of the, the, the rules govern how companies relate to um, the exchange from the standpoint of um, talking about um, their inner workings of the company in terms of governance, how they communicate with us, et cetera. And all our listed companies, um, are it's compulsory that they report to us on matters relating to governance, board composition, um, the you know um, issues relating to ethics, disclosure of information to um, its uh, um, shareholders, and also things about risk measurement within their organizations. So, the, from the standpoint of governance, um, we have that we incorporate also. Um, the Companies Act, our own um, Jamaica Code of um, Corporate uh, um, Governance, all those areas are um, intertwined into how listed company comply with the, um, the matters of governance. And as I said, um, from a compulsory standpoint, but we also understand that it is more than that. So we want to encourage compliance and so the Jamaica Stock Exchange goes a little bit more than that by having our awards. And it is a, the, our private sector pulling in um, collaboration, private sector organization of Jamaica and the Jamaica Stock Exchange having this awards ceremony. And this award, this award that looks at corporate governance disclosure and um, you know, operation for each company. And each company is deliberately evaluated on various tenets, uh, measurements, again, about the board, about how you relate to shareholders, about how you, um, your, your um, internal audit, 
audit committees, et cetera. So, you know, these are some of the governance issues. And then we went further, understanding the importance of governance to say, let us have a corporate governance index. And this index seeks to look at and evaluate each listed company and by extension, evaluate our market as how it does in terms of a compliance to government, governance matters. And it would look at the rights of shareholders, equitable treatment of shareholders, disclosure and transparency, responsibility of the board. And it takes into consideration, again, looking at uh, um, the, the Companies Act, uh, the Securities Act, and other um, you know, other documents that will allow for us to evaluate. The companies are graded AA right down to um, where NR, which is not reporting. And so in the public's domain is how a company um, on the matter of governance is rated. And as, uh, by extension, overall, how the stock exchange, um, which the listed company comprises, um, is graded. The, the journey is less formalized where when it comes to the matter of uh, um, environment and also the matter of uh, um, the social um, reporting. However, the based on our requirement for persons to have within their annual report, management discussion and analysis. And that also speak to the fact that one must speak to the environment and speak to social. We have currently of over 100 companies reporting, 45 companies reporting have policies in place in respect to the environment, have reports this on their website and also on um, in their annual report. And then 68, so this is about the environmental part, the E. Um, as it relates to the G, 68 of our listed companies have policies in relation to the, um, the SME. 68 have in relation to the social and they report on that within their web on their website or um, within their annual report. So that part is a journey. But in relation to even how we look at that, we say it's an and it's a, the ecosystem must be developed. And so whereas with the G, the governance, it is a compulsory with the E and the S, what we do is ask for voluntary um, reporting on these matters. And in the meantime, what we try to do is educate and to um, work towards developing that ecosystem. So as to put in that the framework of uh, a compulsory framework eventually um, in relation to the S and the G and the, the S and the E. But I just want to with quickly closing uh, my opening remark is that on in respect to the social, the stock exchange has also put in what is called the Jamaica Social Stock Exchange, which really mimics the, the financial market. And it is a way in which we are trying to develop that social ecosystem um, for us to, for companies to embrace and to um, fully engage in the matter of social. And as and we are now working with the IDB in terms of developing the framework for listed companies in relation to the, the matter of the environment. So I, I'm, I'm gonna pause at this point to say that, you know, I think we are moving in the right direction in all three areas, one robust, the other two, um, you know, actually developing and um, we should be there soon.
Thank you very much, Marlene. Um, I have some questions, but I want Marlon to, to come in first because I, I, you, you, you mentioned 45 reporting on environment. The e, yes. On the E, and, and yes. 68 reporting on what? And 68 reporting on the S, okay. the social. But, right. but that reporting, as you said, is not- It's is not compulsory. There. It's not compulsory, and there's no regulatory or, or disclosure framework for it. They, they, it's just a report that they provide. Yes, they provide a report, and so it is. It is. There's no framework to say, "Look, you have to report in this manner." Um, but they do report, and they and they report on their policy, and they report on what they are doing. And naturally, you know that um, some some companies, based on where they are, might see social as donation, which you know it's not. So so. Um, Obviously, why we have the social stock exchange is also a means of educating our listed companies and others because we, we, we when we talk about listed companies, I want to broaden it to say companies um, on, on others in terms of just what are the matrix, what are the, the measurements for, so, for the social, you know, and um, so that we can take it from that end um, into the realm of the framework and also into the realm of whether it is compulsory or not. And, and just to be clear, that that is of 100, right? 45 and 68 of 100. Of 100, yes. Okay, great. Okay, I'm yes. interested in getting the the comparative statistics from Marlon. Uh, so actually, we're not going to get it from, uh, from Eva. But I, so Marlon, let me hand over to you to get your... And then I, I have some questions I'd like to post, of course. But um, let's let, let let's let me let me open the floor to you, Marlon. Well, for, first, to start on a late work late note, um, since there are, there are two of us now speaking, are the rules of engagement that we speak longer or we speak slower? <laughs> <laughs> we now have a little more time to engage, so you can speak <laughs> longer if you wish or slower. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Okay, well, 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 thank you. Well, first, let me thank um, CCGI for uh, giving me this privilege to be part of this um, panel and to be able to share um, the stage with Marlene. I'm sorry Eva isn't here. Um, you can tell that, as Marlene said, we've, we've shared the stage many times before. And um, Marlene and I have a, a very special relationship. So. There's obvious um, love and affection between us. We've, we've been together for a, for a long time. Um, to, 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 to add to what Marlene says, basically we're, we're both at the, at the same, well, I think as it relates to the, to the, to the um, ENES, um, people tend to report S in the form of corporate social responsibility. And we know corporate social responsibility is not quite the same as the, the S and the ESG, but that's the closest we have to it. And you find that generally speaking, um, most companies um, have a section on, on their corporate and social responsibility, which cover in some, some degree the, the, um, the social side of the ESG. Um, the environment, the more progressive companies in our in our uh, in our companies listed do have something about um, the environment, but it's as as Marlene had said to, uh, as well, um, it's developing. The governance part is is very strong. Um, the Barbados Stock Exchange, quite a few years back, 2014, I believe it is, had put in place um, corporate governance recommendations for listed companies. We've developed a code, but we've not implemented that code as, as yet. Um, but what, what we do find is that almost all the companies report on their governance practices, you know, the different committees, the mandates that the committees have, um, the attendance to meetings, what, what, they're, what the, work, the work of the various committees um, do, you know, particularly the audit and finance committee, the governance and probably nominations committee. There, there are reports on that, but, but, but there still needs to be more work in that area. Now, 
going to the, the, the topic at hand, you know, you know, why are we, why are we doing this? Um, here in the Caribbean, we are seeing the effects of climate change. We are seeing how uh, what we do with our environment is affecting us, and people are are conscious of these things, investors and stakeholders as, as a whole. And as you mentioned, as an interesting comment you made earlier about retention policies, you find particularly the younger generation they want to work with companies that take the environment and social, social issues seriously. As, as we all know, the governance issues are a given. If you are any, any company of any standard, governance practices are, are given because sometimes they're, they're, they're legislated in law and the stock exchange rules may require them. But you, you find that companies, um, that, that retention of, of talented people tend to stay or, or go with companies who have have consciously made decisions um, to look after the environment and the social aspects of, 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 of their, in their operations. And that is important. So sometimes people might think, you know, I came from a session this morning earlier. Somebody said, sometimes people may think, you know, there's a cost, well, there's a cost attached to implementing or practicing ESG and, and doing these things. But there's a greater cost of avoiding these things because sometimes you, you have an issue as it relates to the, the, the opportunity cost where th things happen to your company or issues arise which you need not have to deal with. For example, reputation issues if you do not consider the, the, the ESG um, in your reporting. Now, most of us, most of most of us understand that, as, as I mentioned before, the, the ravages of climate change and the impact that climate change has on economies, on families, on businesses needs to be, to be considered. And what we are finding is, is that companies need, need to report on these things because their shareholders are requiring these things. We, call, we, we need to, we, we see this as, in, you start a, is, is investor grade type of reporting um, for, for these companies. So you, you need to report on these things. And everybody is aware of the Paris Agreement and the need to reduce um, temperatures to below 2.2% 2 .2 um, pre-industrial times, um, but mostly we're striving for 1.5%. And it will require ambitious actions from all parts of the economy. And we as stock exchanges need to play our part. Uh, the window for action is small. The UN back race is zero campaign, which you know, deals with, includes companies and cities and regions and, and financial institutions, spotlights the need for emissions to have by 2020 and to reach a net zero position by 2050, or else the, the, the ravages of climate change are ir irreversible. So we're basically racing up against the clock. So a growing number of financial institutions, um, including the world's largest financial institutions are working towards reducing these, these things, re reducing emissions and, 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 and the need for us, the need for, for companies to report on these things to let their shareholders and investors know what they're doing. So what, what can we do at the stock, at, at stock exchanges? Exchanges need to consider the implementation of a net zero policy, the net zero ambitions of, 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 the, of the UN. Specifically, and they, they need to understand the difference between baseline targets and progressive targets. And what's baseline targets? Baseline targets contain the core target areas that exchanges should start with. And, and then the progressive targets are those, tar those outline targets that contain more advanced elements. So as we, we deal with the baseline, the, the different aspects, and we can get into to those things in our discussions, but uh, we need to, 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 to report and let people uh, make ourselves accountable. These are stock exchanges themselves. And that's another thing too, you know, we, we, uh, we, we make reference to companies listed on our stock exchanges, but we too as stock exchanges need to make sure that we are playing our part and, and doing what is necessary to, to reduce emissions. So the, the specific targets that exchange set are, are, are it must be able to be achieved depend on the, 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 and may vary according to the range of factors such as the business model, 
and the regulatory environment, the type of products and services offered, the availability of relevant data and the, and the exchange's perception of the climate risk exposure, not only to its own business, but to the companies listed on its, on its, on, on its exchange. So generally speaking, the sphere of influence can be, the sphere of influence can be divided between two categories, namely how the exchange approaches its own operations. You know, for, for example, we, are this, we in the Barbados Stock Exchange, we try very hard to put things in place. For example, simple things as, I remember a few years, we swapped out all of our um, fluorescent lights and put in LED lights, again, to, to play our part in, in reporting. And, and you know, even, even like when people leave offices during the day, you don't leave lights on in your office, you turn them off. You, you, you know, you, you do what you can to help the situation. And then the other sphere of influence is how it approaches market participants and suppliers. And these are the, where the influence will have more significant boundaries. Th this is where, 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 for example, our sphere of influence is with listed companies and having them do what is necessary and reporting on, on what, is, what they do um, to, to put things right. So exchanges should offer climate disclosure training at least on an annual basis. So that's where it starts. I think we need to put a spotlight on the issue. People want, I think more and more people in the Caribbean are seeing that we need to, to take stock of what we're doing from a, from a carbon emissions perspective. And we need to do what is necessary to, 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 um, to, to curb or bring the levels down, as, as was said, um, to like 1.5% 1.5 Celsius um, by 2030. Uh, and, or, and to a net zero position by 2050. If not, the effects are of, of, of these carbon emissions are, are irreversible. So training can take any format. It can include in-person training, webinars, e-learning videos, written training, um, materials, et cetera. But we need, I think where we can start, uh, where we can start is to shine a light on the issue and get people to understand that there needs to be a change. The exchange may offer training itself, endorse external training partners or third parties to assist in the training. And they should be continually evaluating the training material, at least on an annual basis, to make sure that what they're putting out there in the marketplace um, is, is current and is and is 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 meeting the develop is, is meeting what is developing in the marketplace. The key, but the key part that we as stock exchanges need to play is in disclosure. On an annual basis, exchanges should report on, on climate, climate training offered during the reporting period, providing information such as types and of training offered, target audience, topics involved, and, and the participation statistics. These are, these are important things. And the disclosure also needs to come, needs to uh, follow the lines to of what companies are doing in their own operations to, 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 to limit and reduce carbon emissions and bring themselves to a net zero position. I remember, uh, this is why I have to give kudos to, to Marlene for raising this with me. Uh, I remember about, I think it was 2012. That's the time Marlene, you, you all joined the, the, the UN Sustainable Stock Exchange Initiative, it's 2012. I I thought I think that's the year that I can't. Yes, it's about 2012. Yeah. About 2012. Yeah. At the time, yeah. you know, Marlene was was considering it, and she in, she invited me. She said, "Marlene, let's do it together." And I went to my board, and my board at the time didn't see the value, and like everybody else, wasn't sure. You know, was this going to cost us? What does it mean? Um, I went back at it a few years later. Uh, matter of fact, 20 last year, last year, March, 2022. And I, I, I said, you know, let's, I went to my board and said, let's be part of the UN Sustainable Stock Exchange Initiative. Well, the, the, compo the, the composition of the board changed a bit, new chairman. So the, 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 it was an easy sell then. The only constant there was, uh, I guess, Marley people like me and you have been around for a long time, um, <laughs> running our stock exchanges. So at that point in time, 10 years later, um, we joined the UN, stock, the UN Sustainable Stock Exchange Initiative. And, and, and we, 
as part of that, there are a lot of workshops, webinars, material templates for, for companies to, to be able to um, disclose their, 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 their um, what they're doing to, to limit, um, to, to protect the environment and, and do what is necessary to, to, to keep emissions down. Um, recently, earlier this year, we joined the UN Global Comp the UN Global Compact again, um, whose goal is to try to achieve the sustainable and development goals by 2030. And we are part of that too as well. So we, we at the Stock Exchange are tooling ourselves, building up these skills internally to be able to make, to play a role on, and play a part in, um, in, in, in helping our companies, our listed companies to be able to, 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 to um, to, to, to fall in line with the ESG requirements, particularly the END and ENDS. And as I mentioned before, this morning we, we, we co-hosted an event um, here in Barbados, the Barbados Stock Exchange and UN Global Compact Operations here in Barbados. Um, here in Barbados to, 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 to promote and invited a number of, of, of companies. And we had quite a few companies, we invited 40, um, um, companies and about 20, um, 25, 30 companies attended. So we're, we're, we're trying to put a spotlight on the issue. And as time, develop, as time evolves, develop the templates and the framework to help our companies to, to register, to, 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 to report on these matters. And what should also be noted is that the standards are coming soon. The, 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 the ISSB has issued two standards, S1, and S2, I think this month, I think they were issued, they, they, were, they were sent, sent up. So these, these things, so even though um, we, might, we, we might not be fully aware or some people, some companies might not be fully aware, it is coming. And in, in fact, the companies that, 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 that are making themselves or educating themselves on this know that sooner or later, um, we will have to report these things in our financial statements, just like any and every other IFRS standard. And I'll, I'll end there. I'm sorry, Thank I can't give you, oh yes, you, you, you asked me to so, say so, so, I just, I was rushed for time, like everything else. And I just, I pulled up a few financial statements. I have them there on my desk now, just going through them quickly, okay. just to see, um, you know, where else. But I, I can say that for the most part, Governance issues are reported on, and people tend to report social issues uh, as um, co um, um, corporate social responsibility matters. And there's okay. not, I, I haven't seen too much reporting on the environment, but that is coming. I think th these standards are coming into play 2025 and 2026, um, the S1 and S, S2 from the I ISSB. Right, I'll, so I'll, I'll on that there. point, right, so on that point, um, I, I I would like to just put some questions that are that put it, 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 uh, into the into the chat or into this group here. I think it was in March 2022 the U.S. Securities um, and Exchange Commission um, proposed some sweeping um, changes on how U.S. companies reported. And I know there was some a lot of public feedback going back and forth, and it was supposed to be. And I'm reading I'm reading a note now um, saying after delay. It was supposed to be finalized in the spring of this year. Um, uh, do you all, where do you all look to for your stand to, to sort of say this is what is on our horizon? Is the is it the SEC? Is it the is it the um, the FTSE? Where, where, is there an exchange that you look at that sort of guides you all? Uh, Marlene, well, start. Yes, um, there are. A few exchanges that um, we look at when we are doing our changes or, or you know, rule amendments or um, improving what we do. Um, one is we normally look to the Australian um, Securities Exchange because they are, they are very, um, you know, upfront and they, they, they are progressive. Yeah, we good. also look at the Toronto Stock Exchange. And to Toronto for a major reason too, even with our security scores, et cetera. Initially, when we began and our rules have been um, right. developed based on that model. 
and we we look towards the New York Stock Exchange. Um, obviously, we look at what the US SEC says at a lot. So uh, from the from the digital currency, digit, you know, all of those things, we look what the US SEC says. And the fact is that there is a lot of noise in the market at this point um, regarding companies um, seeking to say whether if uh, if the raft of changes and framework become mandatory, what would it cost them? Because there is a cost to reporting, there is a cost to putting in place um, the, the mechanism for reporting on whether it is ES or G. And mm -hmm. you know, there are some pushback in terms of the raft of um, changes that the USSEC um, would want to implement. And we are watching that. But really what we are doing too, in terms of developing our own um, framework, there are quite, and, and let me start with, for example, with the E. There are quite a number of models out there, even from the standpoint of our um, UN Sustainable Stock Exchange. There is a model there in um, the UN Global Compact. And we look towards that because right now we are we are developing the um, we are going to be launching next year um, the, our green bond. Naturally, you don't launch a green bond unless your your E is sufficiently robust. So, along with the government of Jamaica, um, in collaboration with um, the IDB we are seeking to develop that framework for the reporting on E. And some of the models that we are looking on um, are you know, the UN Global Com Compact, the Climate Disclosure Standard um, Board, what they have available, and the UNCTAD the guidance in good practice. So some of these we are looking at, because as you said earlier, Gabriel, one size doesn't fit all. Okay. So we yes, yeah, so we we have to look at these and say on the basis of what we are looking at, what can we roll out? What what is going to be our framework? So we are not going to reinvent the wheel, but we are going to look at how we modify in order to introduce this to our um, listed companies. And I might let me just add um, a, with what Marlon has said, the stock exchange already is doing the groundwork by um, doing education courses for our listed company. So on the S, we have developed a curriculum in relation to um, social, what you look for, how you measure it, what is the impact measurement and all of that. And we are actually working with some of the, um, some agencies in order to allow companies to understand how to measure impact. Yeah. And as it relates to um, the environment, we are currently developing all the courses to speak to how you on, um, measure, appreciate, and can report, re because reporting is key, or you report on it or you measure it. So many of the things we are actually doing now is the foundation work, the sensitizing sensitization of our um, listed companies and others who come to these workshops. If I may, if I may add, you know. Some... You mentioned, Yamalan, you mentioned ISSB, and I want you to jump in here because ISSB is starting to rear its head, so to speak, to put standards that so it's not just reporting, but actually having standards proper setting. standards. So let's see how there's the metrics. So go ahead now, take over because I think that's a part I wanted to ask you. But go ahead. Yeah. Let, let me let me let me start by saying um you know Marley mentioned how the, the concern always is cost. You know, what is it going to cost me to, to, to do this? The question that, that we should be asking ourselves is what's going to cost us not, if we don't, not, if yeah. we don't. Correct. Um, Correct. And then sometimes the cost, the, the information, the data that you see um, to, 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 to measure these things are might be information that you, you that you have right there in your organization. Simple things like, for example, 
seeing what your kilowatt hours is are on, on your, your 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 late bill, you know, your water consumption. These these are things that are there. And you know, if you have a fleet of vehicles, how much how much money do you spend on gasoline? What would it cost if you um, switch to, um, to to electric vehicles? So so the you know you start with what you have. And as time goes on and you build and you see the successes that you're 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 gaining, you 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 move from you move from there and you you develop and you and you continue to progress, progress onwards. So sometimes, you know, being, you know, my background is, is accounting and finance. So, you know, and that, you know, as an accountant, you know, you always say, well, how is it gonna affect the bottom line? But sometimes there, there's more to to you gotta look at all the other things that might benefit the organization besides the immediate cost is their opportunity costs that might be incurred that you're that you're not con considering um and then the other thing you know as it relates to um the, the who we look at for example at the stock exchange we tend to look to london um london um toronto too as well um singapore to some degree to see what they're doing in our market uh, I can't say we look at to Australia. I, I know that Australia is a progressive jurisdiction when it comes to their, their rules and their regulation, uh, but I can't. No, I, I, we, we've not specifically looked at Australia. And then I always look to see what's happening in the region, what what, what Trinidad is doing, what right. Jamaica is doing to get a feel, and what, what my friend Trevor is doing on the East, in the Eastern Caribbean Stock Exchange to see see what they're doing. And and and, and sometimes you, you you need you need to look at other you know, you want to raise the bar, but you also want to look at other developing markets um, that that are are doing are trying to do similar things in like Asia or Africa, and, and see you know because their markets might can't compare to the U.S. market right. or the or, or the or the London market. So you look at other markets um, that are developing like yours, and and you 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 you, you see what they're doing. Going to the the, 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 the standards, uh, I must say that I, I have to read the standards now. I, I'm aware of what is happening. Um, I know that they're working with IASB, IFR standards, uh, and the, the IASB and the ISSB are working together to develop these standards. Mm -hmm. I'm aware that the standards came out this this month, but I, I have to study them now. So don't 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 pin me down to, to exactly what. <laughs> What is what what is going on in with, with these standards? But, but it's on the horizon. Know. What I'm saying is on the horizon. Yeah, yeah. The horizon. We are that we yeah. are that tipping point. We are the yeah. tipping, tipping point where where once ISS, once ISSB start to release standards, I'm not yes. talking about next year, but we're talking maybe a five-year horizon yeah. when we start to see those standards. And you remember how IFRS affected yes. companies. In the region, when they started to throw standards at us, and yeah. the same is going to happen with ISSB. Yes. Yeah, I remember like IFRS nine and seventeen were, were, were <laughs> big. you know people made good consultants made good money on on IFRS nine yes. and seventeen. So that maybe Marley, yeah. there's an opportunity for us. We should retire and start consulting on these things. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, an idea. Yeah. <laughs> That's but, an idea. You know, um, another point I wanted to raise. You talked about employees, brother, that I know, and I raised it, I've heard it being said. Are investors in Jamaica and Barbados, are you getting any feedback from investors that they are looking for businesses that are proactively or uh, uh, ESG aware? And uh, are they asking for more robust reporting on this? Are you seeing that coming from investors at all or not yet? Not really. I think um, it is the stock exchange um, in Jamaica, I'll speak about Jamaica, that would be pushing that, yeah. you know, because we know that it is there, it is in the environment, it is important as we try to benchmark ourselves um, and play in the global arena and where capital seeks to go in terms of uh, the green, et cetera, we understand that we have to get our listed companies ready. So mm -hmm. it is um, the, the market understands that the stock exchange, along with the government, is pushing and it's part of our deliverable under um, our 
the various programs that we have, right. you know, external mm -hmm. programs. So we as a stock exchange are pushing for that. We invite persons to look at it. We also um, just quickly talk about the Luxembourg Stock Exchange. We are in discussion with, with the Luxembourg Stock Exchange. If you know that they have one of the, the best um, market mm -hmm. on in terms of the green. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. green market, green listings. So we are in discussion with that. And incidentally, Panama, which is... Um, Spanish speaking, we also are in discussion with them. So obviously it is it is the stock exchange that sometimes push some of these initiatives. And it is a stock exchange that will drive some of the changes overall because the, the listed companies make up the bulk of uh, um, persons who can make a change. Yeah, who can with, make the with the capacity to, with the capacity to. Yeah. Marlon, what's, yeah. Marlon what's, the, what's the situation in Jamaica this way? I'm in Barbados. Barbados. Is, it, is, it, is it similar that it's not investor-led right now? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with what Marlon is saying. Um, a couple of years back to, you know, one of the things that is being in Barbados is this whole photovoltaic um, farm. You, know, you got acres of land with these 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 photovoltaic panels on them and there was you know what about two two um companies issuers came to us with this whole idea of wanting to raise capital um from the marketplace and asked us if we if we, we would consider green financing too as well and so we immediately looked at it looked at the we developed rules we sent the rules to the our regulator and got the rules approved you know the whole question of well, Lord, well, well, it has to be certain. The project has to be certified by an independent um, third party. What, what, what's the name of the people, um, Marley? You can tell me, you remember offhand, but there are certain people who certify these yes. projects. Yes, they certify okay. to ensure yeah, so that we, there's no we green through, so, here. Yeah, not in the right. right. So we, we went through that process of, of developing rules and we have the rules there, but then it went quiet. You know, it seems like right. persons yeah. thought alternative financing, you know, um, debt financing through issuing of bonds, um, mainly through issuing of bonds, because sometimes these companies have the capacity to go in the marketplace and, and, and get sophisticated investors to purchase, uh, to sell bonds to, to, to finance these projects. But, you know, right. so that was somebody, an, an issuer coming to us and say, look, you need to get have rules in place for us to be able to go to the marketplace. But from an investor perspective, not not so much not so. really okay but you know camille camille facey has put a, a comment in the chat saying that some customers are requesting esg information from suppliers and i, I i've actually heard that happening in in trinidad um some of the some of the multinationals are, are asking for your so for example um pay gender um gender diversity on board so they're asking for certain uh, metrics and alongside that, and I want to throw a word in here, which I know a lot of people don't like to talk about: green washing. Right. So I want to throw that word in. I know we don't have an issue with green washing yet because we don't have to wash. We don't have to wash yet, but when we start to wash, are, are we, what's the feeling about green washing? Is there any thoughts on it? Well, that is why we have to ensure that the ecosystem that is developed is such that um, when a company um, issues a bond, um, there is measurements and metrics right. and reporting to um, ensure that, you know, it is not, it's not tricking the system in getting the sort of financing for their bonds. Yeah. So right. um, th there will be certification of those bonds and ongoing disclosure and um, you requirement to ensure that you don't have greenwashing. Greenwashing obviously is very, very topical now. Many, many um, investors are even pulling back from investing in green because of this. So the Jamaica Stock Exchange through the Green Climate Fund um, and IDB and others when we are developing, that is part of the consideration. What are the requirements? How do you certify them and how, what is the continuing ongoing disclosure and measurements to ensure that, you know, we have a, um, a true green bond or a true green um, security. I see, um, I see 
um, we have a comment there saying that there is a fair amount yes. of fairly great greenwashing mm -hmm. taking place. Yeah. But again, because we don't necessarily have standards on, on a number of these environmental um, uh, reports, and you know, I think I think Marlon has it hard because his prime minister has gone out there and said and, and made it very clear that the people in the rest of the world are affecting. <laughs> Yeah. Our island states with their environmental policy. So we, we, you know, we, and I tell you, you know, even in Trinidad, many businesses are taking a very, a very strong position in the in in the environment. Not even reporting, but the environment, the environmental operating standards. While there is no reporting requirement, they yeah. many businesses are saying we want zero wastewater. So there's not a reporting standard. Yes, but there is because you know wastewater is an issue in in small island states like ours. Um, 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 so how do we treat with that? Um, I know I know a number of companies are looking at some social reporting aspects in terms of diversity, in terms of executive pay compensation, um, you know, different areas. So these are things that I think any company that is either on the exchange today. Or thinking of coming in exchange, or on, on or thinking again listed, or anybody in business today needs to recognize that I think it was Milton Friedman that said that he the term he used was we have to do more than than make profit, yes. but now the standards are changing. We need we we don't just need to think about the environment. We need to think about our stakeholders, our employees, our 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 investors, our communities, right. Yeah. And, I agree and, with and, you. and that's the demand. So it's not just listed companies. And I, I'm only the reason I'm raising that is that companies need to understand they can't get away from this by 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 dipping their head down, because it is going to become prevalent across yeah. for private or um, listed companies. Wouldn't you say so? Yes, correct. And which is why I was very happy about the statistics that I I gave to you in terms of the, the 68 companies that are actively reporting on the social and the, the, the 45 on the environment. I think our companies have been constantly being um, you know, exposed to the fact that these are part of the overall um, you know, standards that you know, one should look for when you are looking on profit. It is not, it is about the profit, it's about the planet and it's about the people that yeah. you look at. And I think our companies are being sensitized to that, yes. If, if I may add, you, you, the, the thing is we are seeing effects of, of, of these environmental issues in real time. I mean, we last week, we, we, our island had to close early because of Brett coming through. And this is June. This isn't even September yet, and, and the waters, the Caribbean waters, haven't really started to warm up yet. So imagine if it's starting so early in, in the hurricane season that we have in storms. What's going to be happening in, in in August, September, October? It's going to be crazy. And so the reality, we are living the reality of the, of this thing, of, of the environmental effects of, uh, of of carbon emissions on a day to day basis right here in the Caribbean. And I guess that's why our prime minister is so vocal. For two reasons, we, we, we get the hurricanes, which are coming more frequently and more yes. vicious, and then we have to rebuild. We have to rebuild our societies to make it more resilient. We have this debt, debt trap, this debt, debt, debt around our necks pulling us down. So she's pushing out to get um, <laughs> uh, financing yeah. for, for, for making our, our our economies and our our societies more resilient. So it's, we we are living this thing, and and people are seeing it. And I think as the more it happens, the more People realize that we need to do something, and we need to report on these things. And when once you measure something, you are more inclined to, to do something right. about it, to, to do something about it. And, and that's what that's what it's all about. It's not that you, you were reporting for the sake of reporting. We're reporting because we want things to be better. We want to improve the situation in our in our in our, in our societies. We are very vulnerable to what what climate change is doing to us. Correct. Correct. So I see. Um... Kamla has put a question in, and we're talking the social, um, the social stock exchange. And um, Marlene, as usual, you you tend to lead on these initiatives. So give us our background on this. Is there is, is profit part of the equation? 
No. <laughs> um, okay. the, the, we, 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 we launched the Social Stock Exchange in 2019 because we believe that um, sustainable growth is going to be directly related to um, the social the social fabric this you know how how you treat with um, the social sector um, we wanted to ensure that it is more formalized obviously um, many persons will say we are doing social activities but we wanted to ensure that it is uh, more formalized persons um, can contribute to the development of the social sector while seeing what the impact is and being able to measure the impact on the company and on the society in general. So this is the idea of the social stock exchange. It will provide fair, efficient and transparent um, you know, information to the market and also keep those social projects and social entities um, more, in line with what are the what are the requirements what one can expect in terms of return versus investment and when we're talking about investment here we're talking about social investment so recently um we have had um one of the a major project being launched on the social stock exchange called project star and that is a collaboration between the PSOJ and um, the entities, um, you know, and, and um, Jamaica really, um, to look about how we effect changes, social changes, and how you measure social changes. And um, that actually has led to um, us now launching a IPO a social IPO. I don't know if it has ever been done in the world, but this is really how we see the impact of the E, the S coming together, because even with the, the social stock exchange, the environment is a part of that mix in terms of the projects that can be um, delivered and, and get, that can raise social capital on the exchange. Marnie, no, I mean mischievous, but is that is it like a, a new form of crowdfunding? This IPO, um, it is, but with a difference, Marlon. Okay. And I'm glad you asked that question, because generally speaking, when you get a crowdfunding, um, it is not structured in a way where um there is accountability, reporting, impact measurement all of those when you have the with the social stock exchange when you when the monies are raised the company the project is listed and that's phase one we have a phase two too the company is listed when the company is listed the company goes through all the phases of uh, um prior to being listed what they must present or they must present their project and afterwards what they have to do is report just as all they report when they are listed on the financial market. So their financial statements must be reported on how they use their money, the cash flow, everything. So it's different, Marlon, than a crowdfunding. It crowds the fund, but just as all, <laughs> even a financial IPO crowds a fund, but then there is accountability post that gathering of the funds. Marlene, I gave you a lollipop and you hit it for six. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have a question that I want to add to that, Marlene. I was very interested to hear you say that this was not something that um, has been done in in before. So, yes, so that kind correct. of idea is very yes. novel. Yes. Which, by the way, we should then acknowledge for all of our participants to know Jamaica has several times in the in the last few years proven its world class status, having been awarded best performance stock exchange. exchange. Um, my recollection was 2017, 2018, 2015, 2015 and 2019. 
Right, very good. And, so and, the, and, and the highest return stock exchange, which year, Molly? Which give, it was a year you give the highest return? 2015 and 2018. Okay. Right. Or it's 2019, so, one, one of those. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I wanted to clarify then, Marlene, is it, is it a, a company that registers on the social stock exchange or a project? Because I know project size a oh, project. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, Could so the Caribbean the, Corporate Governance Institute become yeah. listed as a non-profit entity on the social stock exchange? You so there are two markets. So market one, a project must come through a social entity, but you are not listing that social entity in market one. You are listing the project. In so so, but we evaluate the entity so as to list the project because the entity must be capable of doing re reporting must be able to manage um, the social um, capital, et cetera. But we so train the this company. The PSOJ that is, is listed? It's it's PSOJ. The, the, no, not the PSOJ. It's no. Project Star that is listed. Project Star being the project. But, but that sounds similar to, to, to our company. Is, is that There's a company who lists a security. So you're not listing the company, you're listing the security. You're listing the security. Yeah. Yes. So it's, a similar, in, it's similar, but in market one, there is no return, no financial return on your investment. In market two, what we are going to be doing, and um, the, this is a joint effort with the government, the, the, so let, there are legislative changes that have even been started where the, the social stock exchange is recognized in legislation. And two, what happens after that is the entity now can issue shares. Your social is entity can issue shares and list those shares on, in market two. Now, those shares will give a return on investment because some social entities will be able to uh, make a profit. And so those shares, would you, the, the persons who buy into the entity could get a return on investment. But that is going to be a, a limited return, obviously, because it is a social for social good. So the, those are the two markets, but we are now in market one, where when you invest in a, a, a project, the investment is a social investment, meaning that, you know, you see more persons being educated, you um, the other the other things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in um, we have in, another... And one of the framework for, for fundamental for us is the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Right. Um, I have another question um, there, and it's 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 directed to Marlene and, and uh, Marlon, and they're asking if any current or proposed frameworks um, or facilities for carbon offset projects for companies. Um, um, that is believe... part of the consideration that we are we are looking at carbon credits. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not not on my side. Not on my side. Not on your end. Okay. Yeah, let, let, let's invite Uma to, to um, because he had several comments and yeah. questions. Maybe, Uma, if you want to unmute and um, let's join you to the, the conversation so that we would hear um, if you want to elaborate on any of your points and, and your question, please. Sure, thank you very much, Kamala. Good afternoon, all. Sorry to interrupt uh, the nice, wonderful flow but it's been very it's very stimulating and you know it, it's really heartening to hear the extent of where at least in the examples of uh, the Barbados Stock Exchange and the Jamaican Stock Exchange where you guys are at and basically you know enabling and, and getting more and more into a receptive mood for a lot of what is to come the deluge that is going to come um so basically um, well, you answered the question on the carbon offset project on the carbon offsetting. Now, for me, one of the correlatives of carbon offsetting is the fact that there are some entities that 
by the by rush by reason of their capabilities or feasibility will not be ESG friendly. That's a fact. The ESG and sustainability debate is pushing a 120% optimistic rate, which is wrong. Because the reality is that on the ground, there are, more, there are a lot of organizations that will not fit the bill and will not fit. In fact, they will go out of business, mm -hmm. which leads me to the second item, which I guess would also correspond with entities such as stock exchanges and, 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 and SECs and other regulatory entities. One of the other elements of sustainability in ESG from my consulting observations is that we put, it's almost as if the sustainability and ESG, the new kid on the block, like TQM, like balance quarter, et cetera. And we forget that fundamentally, the first drive for any capitalist business oriented person is profit. Mm -hmm. So what happens when we have a nice sustainability report and all the nice CEIs and DEIs and carbon offsetting and, 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 and all of those measures being reported on, but the company is financially insolvent. So yes, we are hero of the environment. Yes, we are social hero. We've embraced the social and economic and environmental risk and translated it and the materiality, et cetera. But we in liquidation because we don't have the means to support. And I think you, Marlene, said it um, earlier that there's going to be, there's going, there are costs for disclosures. There's costs to bring on resources. There's costs. This is not a freebie. It's not, you know, you just turn on a switch and, you know, you have sustainability issue there. In some cases, it could be quite costly, especially for conglomerates. Yeah. But then do I pursue, you know, the cost of being an uh, organization that's, yes, we love the environment and we're doing this. And yes, we love social and we're doing that, but I'm not making money. So we have to also realize that. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the third thing which I found interesting, um, I think Marlene, you would have been just espousing on it. Hence my question about the structuring. When in the social index, where you have the civil society organization basically registering a project. Yes. Um, so it's like a credit union member applying for a business loan. But of course, you know, you can't give the business the loan. You give the person, but the business supports the person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was asking the question in terms of if in that if it's similar to like a RIT, which is a real estate investment. Yes, I, I, I saw couple. the question there. Yes, and right. yes, what the the, the REIT is. Um, the the a project cannot come on its own. The project has to come from an entity that is going to um be able to deal with that project or operationalize that project, which is why we evaluate the, the, the entity that is coming to see that the project that is um, it, that entity is carrying, that the entity will be able to support um, the delivery of the project because all too often what is happening is that persons refuse to invest in social projects because there is no confidence. The, the, the trust factor is gone um, because people see that they have invested in, project, in projects and nothing comes of it. So what we do is to, to assist the entities too in terms of um, how they, they manage their projects. We actually do that um, because we um, form partnership with, say, United Way in terms of how they assist those um, companies to manage those projects, to evaluate those projects, to see where there can be corrective actions. And so that you have a positive um, and successful outcome. That's what we do. And the, and the training is very, very critical. This is why we, we developed the social entity training curriculum um, with the funding of the IDB. And the, uh, we have been taking now um, post potential um, entities through the paces of project financing, um, project execution, project um, evaluation and what is the an impact. 
and along with the United Nations Development um, Program, we are now using, or not, not now, but we will be using their software in terms of impact assessment. So you notice what we are doing. We are not saying that we are the social entity. What we are saying is that we are assisting and we are collaborating with these entities in order to get that social sector more formalized. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Kamla. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I might make a point and I want to, the reality is that businesses, there are some businesses that are not environmentally friendly. However, there has to be a recognition that there are businesses now that have, they have a term called green halos, where there are businesses that are recognized for their either environmental, social um, um, work and, and, environment, and businesses that are either, and I don't want, maybe destructive to the environment as well, too extreme, but which are not friendly to the environment, there has to be some consequence mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, and again, I keep on thinking of the Prime Minister of Barbados and how eloquent and how, um, how, how, how aggressive she was in that, in that uh, when she spoke about it. And, and, and especially as small island states, we have to protect our environment. So I think more so, uh, I believe the environmental standards are going to come. And I'm thinking five years, I think you will uh, see that horizon. And the social standards, may, the reporting may not, or the, the disclosures and structures may be a little la later on, but there are going to be obligations in terms of staff, in terms of some investors, in terms of suppliers, customers, that are going to be making demand. So it's less about a public company or a private company. It's more an obligation as an individual. And you know, more than you made a point about turning off your lights. It, 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 we, we all feel it and we all need to take personal responsibility for the way we treat our environment. So it's not a company issue anymore, right? Yeah. It's, about, it's about every individual having, having a, 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 yeah, a standard, a social standard that they set in the way they treat the environment and the way they treat their their co-workers, their employees, their bosses. Yeah, Gabriel. Um, I think yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Alan. No, I wanted to. to, to er, Ermath made a good um, point about the, the whole thing about you know you, you're doing all these things and then you're running a bus company. Um, yeah. But that's not the, the reality. Is like any decision, anything that you do, you, you evaluate it and you make sure it makes sense financially. Um, you know, you look at what. You look at what is required. You set goals to achieving those 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 standards or those requirements, and and some, sometimes you have to move incrementally, but you start moving to get it right. You evaluate to see where you you are at, and you report. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see something, if you know, like in any business decision, you're not going to do something that's going to run you into into problems. You say, I remember in the early days of corporate governance reporting, it was comply or explain. Sometimes you might have to say, well, look, I, I can't, I can't, get, this, this can't work for me. And, I and, and, and I, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. So Ermath, I take your point, but like, you, you just, you, you need to make sure when you're making these, when you're doing these things, you, you assess where you're at, you set goals and standards, you, in setting the goals and standards, you, you want to get to somewhere, you evaluate the cost of getting to that, that place. And you report on it on, on, on an ongoing basis um, in your financial statements, but you don't do anything to, to shut the company down because you, you, that's where the social the social might come into play. You're, you're sending more people. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? very good point. Very good point. Well, um, Kamla, I think we have hit the nail on the head. We are two thirty one, right? Yes, absolutely. So you may want to just ask for closing statements now and. Yes. Wrap up. Yes. And uh, Marlon, let me ask you to, to lead with the uh, Marlene as Marlene, as usual with Marlene's on the on a, on a panel. Marlene no, I, is I, I, so I, I don't mind giving away to, to Marlene. <laughs> okay, well, Marlene, over to you first. Okay. Um we, just we'll, we'll give Marlon the closing statement. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving Marlon the closing, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just want to say it really is incumbent on all of us to embrace the, the three aspects, the E, the S, and the G. Um, 
it is a gradual pro process. It is a journey. Um, for example, with our stock exchange, just using an example, we are almost um, energy efficient because we started phase one, two, three of our solar panel um, journey. We didn't do it all, um, all at once, but right now it is it is there. We have over 400 panels, you know? So um, when we're talking about that, it is a journey. It is gonna be, it is necessary for um, significant market education. In order for us to be successful, it is gonna be in education on the investor side, and on the company side, and generally um, as a population, as a nation, or our various island nations. And so, you know, I just want to close by congratulating again um, the, this, uh, the Corporate Governance Institute, because the more we try to enlighten, um, it is the better for us in terms of the results. The stock exchange, I'm happy that we are here because I think that the stock exchanges singularly and jointly um, serve a very important role in getting the whole aspect of ESG to the nation um, working and for the benefit of our countries. Thank you very much, Marlene. Marlon? One of the things that we, we didn't touch on in this discussion is that you know we need to make sure and not only our boards but the boards of, of, of listed companies understand what is in what the direction of, of, of ESG requires and they, they are on board. You know we we as CEOs have a peculiar position of sometimes having to convince our staff and convince our boards of the direction where, 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 where the company should go. Um, but so it's very important that the at the, at the board level that the, the board is educated and understands the, the benefits of ESG, the benefits of, of being of, of imp, implementing this reporting. Because sometimes, you know, the director might say, well, look, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't think that can make change, take, you're taking the chance of causing companies to leave your exchange, you know, because of the, the extra burden. Um, but no, it, it's not. We, we need to be more enlightened than that. Again, let me thank Kamala and her team for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Good job, Gabriel. You kept us on our toes, and I appreciate it, that too as well. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to make a short comment, and I want to tell you that I think it's important people understand, and I've said it before, I want to reiterate it. This is not a listed company risk. Yes. Every business that we are at a tipping point in the world, and you have you have identified what's happening in June in Barbados, and we've seen flooding in um in other parts yes. of the world. So we are at a tipping point in the world where every organization, public or not, or private or individual, must yes. must put an obligation on themselves, their organizations, their employees, right, to to be aware of the environment and of the social aspect. The governance is, a, the governance is they don't have a choice, right? but on the environment and the social aspect, because we've reached that point where if we don't do it, the obligations, the ISSBs of the world, like they have done with the FRIS, will start putting standards that are going to be even more onerous. I want to thank the, gov the Corporate Governance Institute for having this session. I want to thank you for enlightening me because I have learned so much just participating in this. So thank you very much to the panelists. Uh, it, it, thank I, you. I, you know, people talk about an August group. I, I, I know when I, when, I, when I read your profile, not what you had in, what I, what I researched on you after. It was great to sit with you all. Kamla, thank you for the opportunity. Over to you. <laughs>